Now look guys, before I let you listen to this video, I have to point out something, right? And I have to point this out. One, I recorded this before I finished anime, right? I, I know you shouldn't do that. I know you should wait, but I kind of watched 10 episodes in and I was like, uh, I don't know, man. I don't feel like it. I feel like I just have to record a video on it now because I don't think I'm going to get much more from it. But was I wrong? The second half of the season was so good, which I will talk about at the end of this first part of the video. But what I do want to say is, Someone pointed out, well, not someone pointed out to me, but I saw a comment and it said that this anime is for intersex people. Whereas I recorded the video in my head thinking it's for transgender people. Now, whether you think it's for transgender people or intersex people, I will leave that up to you. But if it is for intersex people, you can kind of, it kind of, I kind of have similar views on the first part of the anime anyway. You can just kind of forget some of the parts I say about transgender people and stuff. But I will be giving a little bit more on my opinion about the anime on the second half of the anime anyway. Now, I didn't know whether to make a video on this anime because, yeah, and you'll know why in a second once I get into this anime, but basically the main focal point of this anime is like the LGBT community. And I feel like most of the time, if you speak out about that community, it can get bad, especially if I'm criticizing it, which I will be in this video. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. But I feel like the anime community, we're not as political as the rest of the world. You know, we're all in our little bubble. So I'm sure we'll just take it as like a review of an anime, right? But first off, right, I like this anime because the start off point of the story anyway, right? Just our main kind of basis of the story is really good. You've got basically the red roses against the white roses. And basically they're fighting for the crown and their families have been fight fighting for the crown through generations, right? So it's basically a one faction versus the other faction type story, right? I love them type of stories. You know, I love them type of animes where they go into like historical events because this is based off some of Shakespearean plays as well. So I kind of enjoy that where an anime takes a real life event that happened and depicts it in maybe their own way or tells it the same exact way just in a kind of japanese animated version but with this anime it had a twist on it right and you, you slowly once you watch the anime you slowly start to realize that the main character it's a bit weird i've never seen a lgbt based type of anime made before right i've never seen that before and i looked up the author i don't think she's lgbt i don't think she's gay i didn't it didn't say she was when i read up on her so i don't know what possessed her to make this anime but i'm guess i'm a guess she probably is if she's writing anime like this it starts off they start to call like this main character whose name is richard right and it starts to kind of call him a demon child and then his dad sees him as a boy, right? It's because his dad always calls him his son. But he kind of has this like alter ego person in his head talking to him. And she's like, you know, you know, you're neither a boy, you're neither a girl, but you're both at the same time. And I'm guessing what the author is showing here is that's how the LGBT, or I'm guessing mainly the transgender community, that's how they think or see how the rest of the real world views them as kind of demons or devils or they're not right in the head not right not not right in the head but they're kind of not right and you kind of see throughout the whole anime the main character struggles with his identity right and i didn't mind that at all that part i didn't mind you know it was it was a good look on what i guess some transgender people have to go through on a daily basis from i didn't mind that what really got me and what kind of ruined the story is it went from now i get it the main character should be the focal point of the story but if some scenes were just a bit a bit weird like first of all i've got to point out like some of the characters see him as a boy right and some characters see him as a girl but it's kind of like they treat him more as if he can switch between the two type thing so like he'll be talking to maybe a one he'll be talking to a girl right and that girl will see him as a boy and the and the girl will fancy him and that and will love him right and then he'll be talking to a boy and that boy will think he's a girl and that boy will fancy him right but it's kind of like the, all these other side characters interact as no one ever thought you know as no, as no one ever come to the conclusion maybe is he a boy or is he a girl? It's kind of like he's able just to switch between the two, which is not realistic at all because you can't change your gender, right? First of all. So I think that's what kind of threw me off about the anime at first. And I feel like they kind of had a really good story, but I guess overshadowed by just the constant, just weirdness, right, of the main character. Maybe it's because it's new. Maybe because it's new and it's different, but... 
I don't know. And then they'll have a lot of points in the anime where they'll kind of just stop and they'll have like over exaggerated moments where he's like, I can never love you. I can never be with you and all that. I can never be accepted by you, which in this day and age, because this anime, bear in mind, this anime came out in 2022. Bear in mind, the LGBT community, you're not, you know, they're not as oppressed as they would like to make out, right? And I feel like that's the kind of message I was getting from this anime is that they're oppressed or still being oppressed, where is if you read a lot of stuff, you read a lot of stuff that's going, especially in America, I'm from the UK, so that stuff does not happen over here as often, thank God. But, you know, if you read stuff in America, you know, you hear a lot of stuff about, you know, they want to get or kids to transition, you know, stuff like that, right? I'm not going to get too political here, but you read about a lot of that stuff, right? And I feel like the message the anime was trying to send is they're really oppressed and the whole world hates them. And it's like, really, they are dominating right now. Like, if you look on your TV channels, if you look on your shows, you know, the LGBT community, they're really dominating in terms of like, that they, they are in the higher ups, they're in the higher seat, you know, the, the big, I don't know what, whoever sits on the top, right in america and really around the world but mainly america they're kind of dominating right now and you can't really speak out against them without against your channels taking down or stuff like that so that's why i kind of had to be a bit sensitive of what i'm saying in this video you know but also it was kind of weird to me that a japanese person wrote this or only because i'm not saying you you won't have japanese transgender people or people part of the lgbt community but i'm surprised they were willing to write this where in Japan they have more conservative not that they don't accept gay people but like let's say for instance there's a lot of hotels where they can't go into right if you're gay there's a lot of hotels you can't go into if you're gay there's you know they're more traditional you know the husband and a wife so it kind of seemed weird for me that a Japanese person was writing this and maybe that's why it's so off because maybe shouldn't have a great understanding about the LGBT community, right? But I feel like you had a great story and I feel like you could have delivered the message in a better way. It's tough. Does anime, does anime really need to get that political? Mm, yes and no, right? Because anime is like, I feel like Attack on Titans is anime where there's a lot of political stuff that are put in there, but I feel like that's done in a smart way, but where, when you've just got an anime where it's just straight in your face, you know, this is this is the main thing we're talking about. A lot of people aren't gonna like the anime because like, basically, I'm gonna go on Crunchyroll and I'm gonna read you guys just the comments under this, right? So I'm, I'm gonna go under the episode that has the most comments. So the first one, I can't tell if it's a man or a woman. See, first of all, right, the story, the way it starts, right? And th this is a great comment here. The way it starts is so confusing. You don't even know what's going on. They don't, the story pacing and explaining what's actually going on in the anime, they do a horrible job at that, first of all, right? So that is a great comment. Cause first I was like, first is he's presented as a boy right as a man and then it's kind of presented as a woman and maybe that's intentional maybe it's that maybe it's their way of saying that's how the world sees us they can't tell who we are you know we can't be put in a box you know we're not when we need the man or woman we can be both so maybe that's the message the author was trying to send out there okay here's another comment so the almost full body of a male but the genitals of a female so first intersex hero not sure what what they are going for but it's not based on science i guess that's why it's in an anime um, that's a great point and you can it's not it's not biologically right of course i won't get too much into my beliefs on that but it's not bi biologically right for the most part right it is a good anime you don't make it clear what you're trying to go for and then when you really do get into the story i just feel like you turn probably a serious issue for um you guys into just kind of a cringe um over exaggerated story but look you guys tell me what you think. If you do watch the anime, you tell me what you think about it. Me personally, I like it. I'm gonna watch it to the end because I do like the main basis of the story. But for me personally, you know, I don't know. I don't know about it, right? I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. This has been Anime K. Peace. I am out. Oh guys, right, you've reached the end of my video now. You're wondering what I was gonna say about the second half of the anime. So 
with the second half of the anime right like i said at the start of my video i watched up to episode 10 and i kind of read it off right but from episodes 11 to 24 or 25 24 it it gets better to be honest it's not as shoved down your throat about the romance and the story actually starts to form well and gets really interesting and, I, and i'm not gonna lie even though I did call it a bit weird at the start, I kind of start to like the story a lot more and start to love the, the romance between the characters, especially Richard and if I'm not mistaken, the Duke of, he's the Duke of something and I'll put it on the screen, right? I kind of start to fall in love with their romance at the end and I feel like that's the kind of best kind of rom because you see Richard go for a lot of romances in the show, you know, he has a, romance with king henry at the start then he has that girl as well and then at the end he has the obviously the boy the guy at the end which i already put on the screen so you know what i'm talking about but i thought like that the best romance in the show and it really even though i i guess technically it's between two guys and and all that right and some people may disagree with that i don't know it's like the way it's told it i kind of liked it right and i've not got much to say about the second part and my opinion on the anime doesn't really change from what i said in the first part but i have to say i really enjoyed the second part of the anime and if anyone's thinking of watching this i think i would recommend it to people but i'd say of the anime and if anyone's thinking of watching this i think i would recommend it to people but i'd say kind of hold out for a bit because the story is over exaggerated and a bit cringe at the start but towards the second half of the anime it gets really good and you actually really start to get invested into the love story but look that's all i've got to say about it tell me if you guys enjoyed one tell me if you guys agreed with my opinions on the anime and two tell me if you do go and watch it or do go and yeah tell me if you go and watch it but look this has been anime k i'm so if you know right now anyway i'm so bad at outros i'm so so yeah just take it as you will i'm out peace